So in this video I'm going to show you how to modify a television remote control so that you can disable certain buttons on it. So I just bought a TV about a week ago and this is the remote that came with it. It's an LG TV and you know this is a pretty average remote. It pretty much does you know everything that you'd expect um, a remote control for a television to do. Um, it's also got these four buttons up here. Uh, one of them says TV, another one says DVD, VCR and STB. And what those are used for so that you can change the function of this remote so that you can use this remote to control your other devices that you might have such as your DVD player or your VCR um, so you don't have to grab a different remote if you want to you know pause your DVD or something like that you can just press the DVD button and then you know press the pause button which is down here however my entertainment system consists solely of a TV I don't have a DVD player or VCR or anything else um, so although it's nice having a remote that can do you know lots of extra functions and can operate multiple devices um, in my situation, it's actually a bit of a nuisance having these buttons up here um, because I find that they get pressed by accident and, um, you know, once the remote's operating in, you know, the wrong mode, if the DVD button is pressed, then none of these other buttons are going to work for me for, for, for operating my TV. Um, and I found a few times, you know, I've been watching TV in a dark room and I want to turn it off or I want to turn it on or something and I'm feeling around for the power button up here and I'll accidentally press one of these other function buttons up here and then even after I find the power button, it's not going to work because, you know, the remote's set in the wrong mode. Uh, so my goal for today is to disable these three buttons of the, the devices that I don't use so that all will be left is the TV button and the power button. The procedure that I'm going to use for disabling these three buttons up here is the same procedure that you could use to disable any buttons on a typical remote control. So we're going to start by taking the batteries out of this remote. And uh, we're not doing this because it's, it's dangerous to work with while the battery's in there. You know, they're very low voltage and you're not going to get a shock from it whether you take the batteries out or not. But it makes it a little bit easier uh, after you have those out to be able to take the backing off. So this remote actually doesn't use any screws or anything to hold it together. Um, it just snaps together. The plastic just, you know, snaps in the sides there and holds it together. Uh, so to get that apart, you just have to basically pry it apart with a, a slotted screwdriver or something like that. Um, I actually use this kitchen knife, I think, I think that'll work the best for, uh, for prying it apart, so I can kind of just stick this in the side here, like that, and then just pop it out, and just kind of go around the edges and, you know, do it all the way around. I'm going to start at the bottom here where the batteries go, that'll be easiest. Alright, so I've got this bottom part separated, and now I'm just going to continue with the knife moving along this surface here. Popping it out as I go on both sides, like that. And now that I've got it all separated apart, this top piece can come off. So to give you an up close look at how these work on the inside, basically what you've got is these rubber mats, which are just sitting on top of this big green circuit board. And uh, what the black things on the circuit board there are, are contact surfaces for the switches. And uh, basically what happens is on the bottom of each of the buttons, uh, there's a conductor. And when the conductor comes down, it pushes down on those contact surfaces and it, it, it connects the two circuits together. It connects the two nodes there uh, together, com completing the circuit, uh, which then you know, sends a signal to the processor of the remote telling it that that particular button has been pressed. So this is what the bottom of the mat looks like here. And uh, at the bottom of each of the buttons, there are these little black circles. And that's what gets pushed down on that contact surface on the circuit board uh, to complete the circuit. Um, but kind of the, the black things kind of just look like, you know, rubber. But they must put something in the rubber uh, to make it conduct electricity. Because as we know, uh, rubber is an insulator, not a conductor. So if you want to disable one of these buttons, it's really quite easy. All you've got to do is you just got to cover up the contact surfaces so that when the uh, conductor gets pushed down on them, it's not going to complete the circuit. So the three buttons that I want to disable on this remote are up here at the top, and they have been labeled. I, I want to disable number two, number four, and number five. And these buttons are actually you know, a little bit more complicated than any of the other buttons on the remote, uh, because each of them incorporates a light in them. They, you know, these buttons light up when you, when you push down on them. Um, so that's what the the diodes, the LED diodes that are that are uh, labeled there, D3, D5, and D6 are. 
uh, those are the lights which actually you know light up the buttons uh, when you press down on them. Um, so the reason they're a little bit more complicated so is instead of having um, just a single contact surface which, which is in the middle of the button, um, instead they've got you know two contact surfaces each on either side um, of the LED and uh, on the rubber mat there there's you know each button has two black conductor things which you know when you push down on them it, it connects both of the the two contact surfaces uh, to light up the LED and to press the button. So what I'm going to use to block off those small little contact surfaces there is some of this black electrical tape and since those little spaces there are so small I'm going to use some scissors uh, to cut them down so it'll be you know nice and small. So there's the first little piece there it's quite tiny so I'm going to use these tweezers to stick it down on the remote. And there I've got the first one in place there. And there's lots of other materials that you could use um, instead of electrical tape for doing this job. Um, it really doesn't matter as long as you know whatever it is is something that's going to stay in place and it's something that's not going to conduct electricity. Um, so obviously um, electrical tape is the obvious choice because it's you know designed to be an insulator and to not conduct electricity. Uh, but you could probably also use something like um, you know, masking tape or even duct tape or something, uh, you know, if you, if you could cut it small enough and be able to get it in the right spots. And as you'll notice, after I'm, you know, positioning these in place, I'm using the tweezers as well uh, to just press down on them uh, to help, you know, the glue or the, the tape to fully adhere to the surface there. So now I've got two of the three buttons finished, I just have this one more up here. Um, so as you'll notice, when I stick them on, what I do is I hold on to them with the tweezers just from the very corner there, uh, because I find that the tweezers are getting, are getting stuck to them if I hold on to them any, you know, any more of it than that. And then all I do is I just position it in place with the tweezers, and then I can use another tool, like a knife or something. Uh, I just have the knife handy because I was using it for prying the case apart. Uh, but I can use that to push the, uh, the tape down to make it stick so I'm able to pull the tweezers away. Alright, so now that I've got all three of those blocked off, I'm just going to do a little bit of a test of it before I put it all back together to make sure it's going to work. So I'm just going to flip it back over to put the batteries back in, and as I mentioned before, um, it is you know safe to to, to operate a remote when when uh, when the cover is off. There's not you know very much voltage in there. So now I'll just put the rubber matting back on the top there, and we'll give it a little bit of a test. Um, so we're hoping that the TV button still works. So I'll try pressing that, and we'll see if it lights up. So there you can go. You can see a light there. And now the moment of truth, let's press the DVD button, which hopefully shouldn't light up when I press down on it. Let's give that a try. Nope, nothing's happening on the DVD button. No lights at all. Now I'll try the VCR button. No lights there either. And the STB button, which is over here. No light ups there either. So I've confirmed that it successfully worked. So now all I've got to do to finish off the job is just to put everything back together again. So make sure you have all of the rubber mats in their correct spot so that they line up with all the holes um, on the top thing here. And for this remote, as I said, it all just snaps together. So all you've got to do is just, you know, push down on it all the way around and let all the sides snap in correctly. And put the little door that goes on the back of the batteries back on. So now with the remote all back together again, I can still confirm that the TV button here still works when I press it, but none of these other buttons here do anything anymore, which is what my goal was. So now, no matter what button I press on this remote, it's always going to stay so it's in TV mode and I no longer have to worry about it switching to these other modes. So the great thing about this modification is it hasn't made any permanent change to the remote control. Uh, so if in the future I happen to get a DVD player or a VCR or something, or, or more likely if I happen to sell this TV to somebody else that does have one of those things and wants to use this remote uh, to control them, um, I still have the option of taking the, you know, taking the remote apart again and just removing those pieces of tape 
and then being able to use those buttons again and being able to use this remote for those extra functions. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.